Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another conversation. My name is Devagya and uh, Hello everyone, I'm Devang. And in this conversation, we are going to talk about an important non-economic parameter that may cause uh, market fluctuations. So, uh, the objective here is to understand behavioral finance through the example of the US real estate market and that's precisely why Devang is here today. Now, before we get into the discussion, uh, these are the topics that we are going to be covering today. And uh, you can also see the timestamps. And uh, you're welcome to skip to any portion of the video. On that note, Devang, do you want to begin by taking us through the uh, US housing market? The housing market is an important contributor to the US GDP. A home is usually a consumer's or a household's largest purchase. People spend a lot of money on their homes and also what goes inside or right outside them. For example, appliances, decor, furniture, landscaping, and much more. The US housing market has been a long bellwether of the stock market, but which means that uh, the performance of the stock market and the performance of the housing market kind of goes hand in hand. A few key metrics to note are that the housing market typically increases by about 3 to 4 percent year on year in periods of strong economic growth. Thus, an overall return of about 8 to 10 percent can be expected when one ex invests in the housing market. Let's quickly go over through the history of the housing market, which has kind of been dramatic. Uh, the 10 year period between 1996 to 2006 has been a period of very strong growth and this period has seen spectacular increases in home prices. For example, uh, Los Angeles itself saw an increase of about 265% over this 10 year period. As uh, you guys can see on your graph, in 2006, uh, the market crashed due to the housing market bubble, which posted and home prices started to fall. The average drop in home prices was about 25 to 30 percent. Uh, this crash lasted for about five years uh, until the end of 2011, after which in 2012, the market started to gradually recover. Thank you, Devang. Uh, moving on to the next topic, which is uh, behavioral finance. So what exactly is behavioral finance? The theoretical definition of behavioral finance is that it is the study of the psychological and sociological factors that influence financial decision making. Right? And we are going to look at four important factors that influence uh, financial decision making, uh, starting with emotions. So people in behavioral finance are emotionally driven. Second being a heuristic simplification. This simply translates to misunderstanding. So people generally, generally tend to misunderstand a certain piece of news and execute based on that misunderstanding. And you know, this, it, it leads to a chain of events uh, after that. Um, next being social influence. So uh, this is typically when uh, people try to follow someone else's guidance without doing any research on their own. And, you know, under social influence, they tend to take decisions which are uh, influenced by someone else's uh, guidance or research and uh, people stop doing their own research and end up making mistakes. The last but not the least is self-deception, which again simply translates to overconfidence. And I don't want to dive into what overconfidence is because uh, I think we are all aware of that. Before I hand it over to Devang, uh, I'd like to look at, uh, I'd like you to look at this uh, traditional finance versus behavioral finance. Uh, it's an interesting table. In behavioral finance, people are emotionally driven, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, people are more confused here. Um, I'd like to think that people in behavioral finance are uh, not very rational or uh, irrational to an extent. And uh, lastly, they lack self-control. Uh, so they're, they're impulsive in their uh, financial decision making. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much the crux of what behavioral finance is. So Devang, uh, now that we know what behavioral finance is, uh, do you want to take us through the real world example and see how it affected the 
US housing market. Now that you've taken us through the definition and factors related to behavioral finance, I would like to take our users through how these factors play a key role in influencing the housing market. On your screen uh, is the recent performance of two companies, uh, Zillow and Redfin. Now, for those of you who don't know, both these companies provide an online marketplace for real estate and millions of property millions of for sale and rental properties are listed on their website. We would like to draw your attention to the stock market performance in the year 2020. Uh, up until February 2020, right before the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the world economy, the stocks for both these companies were trading at their all-time highs. Then in March 2020, the market crashed and these companies lost about 60% of their value and eventually uh, in May and June of this year, we're seeing that the stock price has completely rebounded and uh, has recovered all of its lost value and is trading at an all-time high again. Trust me, I was as surprised as you guys are when I first saw this. Both these companies uh, in the months of May and Ju June 2020 have reported high volume of traffic on their websites and that their real estate agents have been receiving an unprecedented amount of inquiries. Some of the reasons we think uh, resulted in high demand on their websites are uh, number one, record low mortgage rates. Uh, people might think and assume that their investment would yield a better return if they're paying less amount of market in interest. This can be attributed to a misunderstanding. A desire for more space during the lockdown, uh, emotions driving the desire for a bigger house or a gateway house from the hustle and bustle of the city. A sense that they had competitive advantage when the market is quiet. Uh, people may feel confident about capitalizing in a slow market, hoping for demand to peak soon. And last but not the least, uh, freedom given telecommuting to move further away from their workplaces. People might get socially influenced by other people who talk about and post pictures about a relaxing work from home life. Right. Thank you, Devang. Um, you've pretty much covered uh, what we intended to and uh, yeah so in conclusion I would say that uh, we firmly believe that correlation is not causation you know just because two events are correlated does not mean that one has caused the other or vice versa so behavioral finance may have caused uh, fluctuations in uh, this space as we saw but uh, we are not saying that it is the only factor that may have caused this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it from me. Devang, any concluding thoughts? Sure. Uh, the volatility and the abrupt stock price movement from a high to low and back to a high again cannot be purely based on the financial performance of the company. For example, revenue growth, uh, increase in profitability, mergers and acquisitions, etc. But uh, People's behavior and behavioral finance also might be playing an important role in influencing the stock price. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think uh, one last point from me would be, you know, this video is made from an educational standpoint or we're just trying to introduce the topics. Uh, we tried our best to break it down to as simple terms as possible. So yeah, do let us know in the comments if you've liked or disliked certain aspects of the video and we are happy to improvise. Thank you. Thank you.